is moving from fossil fuels to renewables, from internal combustion engine to electric vehicles. We are moving in the right direction. But the question is, are we moving at the right speed? The UK, along with many other countries, has committed to achieve net zero by 2050. But what about the developing countries who are not yet ready to phase out coal? Heavy industries such as steel, cement, and chemicals, the extremely high temperature required for their production process cannot be economically achieved using renewables. So how are we going to contain those emissions? One of the design projects which I work on is HS2 Rail, where the passengers could enjoy zero carbon journey because the electricity powering those trains would come from zero emission sources. I also had an opportunity to work with EDF Energy managing the decommissioning of their coal-fired power plant in West Burton. Once the decommissioning is over, the site would be utilized by UK Atomic Energy Authority to set up its first prototype fusion power station. However, these kinds of projects alone are not sufficient to solve the ongoing climate crisis. Carbon capture is a vital technology which will help us tackle global warming and deliver climate neutrality. My interest in this topic all started when I was doing my master's in engineering here in this university. After completing my research in sustainable engineering, I decided to do my master's dissertation on applying a multi-criteria decision analysis on the performance parameters of carbon capture technology. It was during this period that I understood the real gravity of climate crisis and how this technology has the potential to evade the climate catastrophe that we are headed to. With melting glaciers, rising sea level, acidifying oceans, dying coral reefs, and burning forests, our future isn't exactly quite promising. The Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, or IPCC for short, has set out a trajectory to limit our global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. The red curve you see here shows the actual emissions, which will slowly decline over the coming years to around 7 gigatons by 2050. The black curve shows the net emission, which has to hit zero by that time. And how do we do that? By increasing the negative emissions to around the same magnitude so that the net result would be zero emissions. But what exactly is negative emission or carbon removals? And how do we separate carbon dioxide from other gases? The absorption tower, which you see here, right in the middle of this picture, is where the separation happens. It receives cooled and treated flue gas and the carbon dioxide get dissolved in the solvent. The CO2-rich cool solvent is then heated in the reboiler to reverse the chemical reaction and to separate the carbon dioxide from the solvent. The solvent is then recirculated back to the absorption tower, and a pure stream of carbon dioxide is transported through the pipeline. Now, this technology can be design integrated for point sources or even retrofitted for existing ones. And that brings us to the next question. What about the carbon which is already in the air? As per NASA global climate change measurement, the current concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere is 420 parts per million. That's a staggering 30% increase only in the last 60 years. Direct air capture is a technology that uses chemical reaction to pull carbon dioxide out of the ambient air. This technology works by drawing air into a facility using a series of large fans. And when air moves over these chemicals, 
they selectively react and trap carbon dioxide, allowing all other components of air to pass through. By capturing carbon dioxide out of ambient air, this technology effectively acts as an artificial tree. However, the carbon captured by a tree might be released back to the atmosphere when it dies. The carbon dioxide separated using this process can be safely and permanently stored. Once the carbon dioxide is successfully separated from other gases, it is then compressed and dehydrated before being sent for transport. Liquid carbon dioxide is transported using pipelines or ships to the point of permanent storage. It is then injected into deep underground rock formations where it is safely and permanently stored. Carbon dioxide is permanently stored in porous rocks just below a non-porous cap rock, typically at a depth greater than one kilometer. This is the East Coast Cluster Project in UK, and it aims to remove more than 50% of UK's industrial cluster carbon emissions. The captured carbon from Humber and Teesside Cluster is transported using land and undersea pipelines to be stored permanently under the North Seabed. The North Seabed has geological properties which makes it ideal for the safe storage of carbon dioxide. The first injection of CO2 into this storage site might happen by 2026. This is UK's first carbon capture plant in Northwich, just south of Manchester. This plant by Tata Chemical Europe would be the first in the world to liquefy and purify carbon dioxide to food and pharmaceutical grade, so that this could be used as a raw material to produce bicarbonate of soda. Its annual target would be equivalent of removing 20,000 cars off the road. There are other examples of carbon capture and utilization. These white trainers you see here are aptly called shoes without a footprint and are made of 75% materials produced from captured emissions. Sustainable material company New Light has used captured emissions to create a bioplastic called air carbon. It's a thermopolymer which can be melted down and reshaped. The company has teamed up with IKEA, which means upcycled carbon could soon be appearing in millions of homes around the world. Engineers and material scientists at the University of California have successfully created construction materials from captured emission in lab conditions using 3D printing technology. Now it's just a matter of scaling it up for industrial usage. Captured carbon could also be used to create carbon nanotubes, which are stronger than steel and at the same time lighter than aluminum. These are all practical examples of carbon capture and its commercial utilization. But I guess the real question is, are we doing enough? The orange line you see here is the required capture capacity to achieve net zero by 2050. And the blue line is the capacity we would achieve if only the current growth rate is maintained. This alarming gap between these two lines should serve as a wake-up call for every one of us to start working on accelerating carbon capture technology. Now, carbon capture or any other negative emission technology is not a silver bullet for global warming. It does not reduce the importance of other actions, such as transition to renewables, sustainable farming, circular economy principles, low carbon transportation or afforestation. Instead, it empowers human combat against climate change and when used wisely, along with all other action, gives us a fighting chance to mitigate the climate crisis. Thank you. <laughs>